We at IBM Research have been investigating physically based modeling. This is a new area of computer graphics where we use computer simulation of physical events to give the motion of computer graphics objects in the screen. In traditional animation, we tell the system where an object starts and where it ends up. The system computes a smooth path for the object to take. The shape and position of the object can be exactly computed for each frame of the animation. In physically based modeling, objects in the system respond to physical forces, and we only find out as the frames are produced where the objects went and what they look like. We're not using pictures to do better physics, we're using physics to do better pictures. We set as our goal in this project to do animations of objects breaking. To learn about how that is done, we started with very simple objects like the cylinder here. The first thing we did was to take a cylinder and let it drop. There's gravity in this world. We defined the cylinder to be spongy, sort of like a bed spring. We expected it to bounce, but we didn't expect the richness of the internal motion. The cylinder bounces off the plane because objects in this world are defined to sense one another and in a collision to move apart. Now the cylinder is starting to rock back and forth. See how it wobbles? What we're seeing here is a form of chaos. Small changes in the initial position of the cylinder result in greatly magnified changes after it strikes the table. In order to see how objects behave when they collide, we dropped a flexible cylinder on top of a rigid one. Collision detection caused the cylinders to move apart in a natural manner. So we knew how to drop cylinders, but what we wanted to drop was a much more complex object. This is the Utah teapot one of the most famous icons of computer graphics. We thought this might be an appropriate object to break. We decided to make the teapot break by having it collide with the table and bend until it broke. We can represent a physical object as a lattice of points held together by springs. If you release the forces holding these points together, the points separate. The resulting pieces are represented as tetrahedra. So, we tried breaking a cylinder. As you can see, the cylinder is breaking, but with two serious problems. One is that the broken pieces are going right through the wall of the cylinder. The other problem is that the cylinder is breaking by crumbling at the bottom, rather than cracking, and by leaving behind a single large piece. As you know, breaking something like this vase results in large pieces as well as small ones. Breakage occurs not as a result of the compression when the object strikes the table, but as a result of the distortion it undergoes after it strikes the table. With this understanding, we were able to get our cylinder to break into two large pieces. We were clearly going in the right direction. We thought we knew how to solve the problem of the pieces going through the cylinder walls. With that, we could make teapots and we could break things. The next thing to do was to see if we could break a teapot. Well, the teapot wasn't as well built as we thought it was. The walls of the teapot fell apart and the handle and spout fell off. So we had to go back to our laboratory and look at what was right and what was wrong with our breakage model. In this attempt to correct our problems, the teapot is starting to break apart even before it drops. The collision detection algorithm is working too well, making each component of the teapot think it is in collision with its neighbors. Here we've corrected the early breakage and the handle and spout are attached, but we still have the shards coming through the wall of the teapot. When we went to put a lid on the Utah teapot, it fell inside because there was no rim to hold it up. Notice though that we have learned how to keep the walls of the teapot together as well as how to keep the spout and the handle attached. But as the lid hits the bottom of the teapot, 
breaks through and the shards inside the teapot still come right through the walls. What we were seeing was another problem with the collision detection. When the object breaks, the pieces that it's composed of must repel each other with no more force than they had holding themselves together before. If the force is too great, the object explodes. Trying out our algorithm on two cylinders, we discovered that the rigid cylinder broke into many different sized pieces, none of which appeared to pass through the walls of either of the cylinders. Now we were really ready to break a teapot. This time the breakage looked pretty good. The lid did disintegrate though, and as we look at the breakage more slowly, we can see that there is a discontinuity in the animation due to a checkpointing bug. This animation was a massive computational task. Each second of animation takes 30 different frames. Each frame takes about a half hour to create. What this means is that a 60 second animation, such as the disintegrating teapot, will take six or eight weeks to create, running 24 hours per day on a 3090. Since we wanted to see a pretty dramatic break, we tried positioning the teapot at several angles before dropping it. This drop doesn't result in much breakage, although the spout did break off. Now the spout has disintegrated, but we still don't have much breakage of the pot. This time we've got a good break. The spout has been pushed back into the pot, and the pot has broken into several large pieces. Now we knew how to break the teapot, but we needed a story to explain why the teapot would be broken. We decided that the teapot was intoxicated and it would sneeze and hiccup. The objects nearby it on the table would respond to the teapot's behavior. There, did you see it? Here it is again slowed down. The cylinders took off in the first three frames with rapid vertical velocity. The reason was that we inadvertently gave their positions as one quarter inch below the tabletop. Then, when we turned on the forces, the vases and the tabletop repelled each other. Well, how do you make a teapot hiccup? We decided to hit the teapot with a burst of gravity. We tried 10 G's and it flattened the teapot. Then we tried 5 or 6 G's and it was just about right. We've gotten the lid to stay up by putting an invisible can inside the teapot that the lid sits on. Here we've made the can just a little too low. Sneezing was another challenge. We knew that tightening gravity was not enough to get the teapot off the table, so we tried adjusting the flexibility of the teapot to make it temporarily softer. In order to make the teapot jump off the table, we start by softening the springs that it's made of. That makes the teapot crouch down. Then we tighten those springs, and it shoots the teapot into the air, shooting the lid in front of it. We turn off gravity and the teapot continues on up into the sky. In the process, the lid is distorted by the invisible cylinder inside. So we started with some physics, but pretty soon we had to invent our own, because true physics was not going to give us the effects we desired. Once we had the teapot under control, we started to look at the vases. When the teapot hiccups and sneezes, we wanted the vases nearby to respond to it. Unfortunately, real vases don't act that way. So we hit them with invisible baseballs. A lot of vases were knocked over before this graceful wobble was achieved. Now it was time to put the individual elements together into our story. There were still problems, so we started refining details. When the teapot bounced off the table, it headed straight for the light source, resulting in a distractingly large shadow. That was easily fixed by moving the light source. The damage to the lid that occurred in the second hiccup was not as easy to fix, so that remained in our final animation. We asked ourselves how fast the teapot should drop and how many times it should rotate while it dropped. The answer we found was then incorporated into our story. And finally, the lid comes down. We preferred this angle of impact. Computer animation is a user interface to the computer. It's a way of communicating information from the computer to the user. 
it's a very efficient means of communication because we people are very well equipped to understand images presented to us in moving picture form, especially if those images resemble the world in which we live. I expect that in about 20 years we will find that computer animation has replaced terminals as the primary way in which people use computers. When that happens, we should expect that using a computer will be just as much fun as going to a movie.